good morning, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you're YouTube. Project RF has got to the point where we're now going to be tackling the running problems. We've done a lot of the chassis work, although I'm going to upload that in a later video where we go through the fork and the suspension rebuilds. Um, however, in this one we're going to tackle the running problems, and that comes down to two main things. The first problem is that the valves are miles out of adjustment, which is causing some issues there. And secondly, we're going to go through clean, check and maintain the carbs. With valve clearances, there are two ways that valves can wear. Now, firstly, they can increase their gap, and this is caused when the followers and the shims and the valve train wears, and the gap between the camshaft lobe and the follower increases. The gap is there to allow for thermal expansion when the engine's running, um, but of course that's a very much measured gap, and if it increases too much, you can end up with situations where you can drop the valve by mushering over the valve head and, remo and loosening collets, uh, and it can make a lot of noise, and of course eventually you start to reduce the valve lift as well. The second way valve clearances can change, which is much more common on higher revving engines like bike engines, is they can actually tighten up. And that happens when the valve seat wears more so than the cam and the follower, and that causes the valve to move upwards into the head and therefore closer to the cam, closing the gap up. Now, in this instance, the valves were tight. They usually are on motorcycles in modern days, but if you look here at this, this animation, you can see where the two areas that cause valve clearances to vary wear. So there you are, that's why we've got to do the valve clearances. And in terms of carburetors, it's a bike with 56,000 miles on the clock. It's had a lot of use. Fuel tanks also rust internally all the time, just inside the seams in places where you can't really see it. But you do pick up little tiny bits of dust and debris. It isn't always absolutely trapped by the filters. So over time, carbs do just get dirty, particularly if the bike's been laid up for long periods of time. So we're just gonna go through, strip the carbs down, check them over, clean as necessary, put them back together, shim the valves out, and that'll be our running problem sorted.
also worth mentioning that there's handy graphs in the manuals, if, usually in Haynes manual or in the workshop manual if you can get hold of one. Um, so you have an intake section and an exhaust section and you have the required clearance, the shim that you've taken out and the measurement that you took and from that the manual will tell you what shim to put in place. I've just worked it out manually but this is a good guide. Okay, so because this cam cover is so rotten I'm going to have to actually like clean it down strip it, clean it down, blast it and get it repowder coated or painted because it is in just such poor condition. So first things first, I'm going to take the breather system off. Uh, I think because we loosen those off whilst the engine was still in the bike, these should just come off quite easily. It says optimistically. I mean, look at that. There's virtually nothing left of it. The tab that's used for holding cables in place. Ooh, sweet. And these bolts probably get replaced as well in pretty scabby shape. I may just blast and or might wire wheel them back and uh, just replate them. Depends if I've got depends if I've got replacements in stock. I don't know I've looked at this before, let's see what the breather system looks like, see if this cover comes off. Ooh, crispy. So there's a rubbing blade that runs through the middle, which we also have to remove. And also, I forgot about these bad boys, some more seals for the cam cover. And again, these will get replaced. I'm going to put this back on, but for now they can come out. As for the breather, I'm not really sure what this is. It's like a wire, wire. They're not wire, sorry, a metal gasket with a rubber over moulding or a rubber deposit over the top of it that acts as the gasket and seal. Uh, we should be able to get hold of these fairly easily. If not, then I'll just have to clean this one up and reuse it. So for now, we'll see about getting those crosshead bolts off. Shouldn't be too difficult. God, Jesus. Maybe not. That is in solid. Wow, go Suzuki. That is not moving for life. Let's try the other one, shall we? Nah, I'm just starting to murder the heads on these. So that rules out powder coating because I can't bake it. So I'll have to blast it with that in place and then just hand paint it with some high temp paint or just decent chemically resistant paint two pack or something like that so let's get these degreased and then into the blast cabinet also into the cooling tank just to clear off all the loose debris and all the grease and everything else this really it's like a water soluble uh, engine cleaner. There's loads of companies out there, products out there, like Gunk and Geyser. Um, all I'm doing here is really just removing the worst of it. And the rest of it will get blasted off in the cabinet. But the less grease and debris that's on here, the less it gets deposited in the grip. Plug up the chamber. Plug up the camera. So. It's not easy to see. There's some serious corrosion uh, around the mounting bosses. It's just real. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Just real chunks of material missing. This side's fared up a bit better, but this side. It's in really poor shape. For now we're gonna to have to paint just so we can get the engine back together. But at some point I'm gonna to have to try and find a replacement part because that is that is not good. There's probably only about a millimetre of material left between the inner and outer just here before it breaks through and it starts leaking oil. Unfortunately it's magnesium and I don't know how to weld magnesium, so you could repair this, but for the cost, you'll probably just get a second hand one off eBay for 20 sheets or something 
So that's after blasting. We'll hit it with some paint once we've done the uh, cam cover. See if we can get it to look a bit more respectable. It's blasted, um, then cleaned down obviously, primed and uh, painted the cover and rear cover and then all of the bolts we stripped and then zinc plated and just replaced all the rubbers underneath them just to try to make it look better, a bit better. It's obvious that it's never going to look good because it's so heavily corroded but at least it stops it from being exposed to the atmosphere, the magnesium underneath uh, shouldn't corrode as quickly or as badly as it currently has, any further at least. Um, it's a few runs, I'm not exactly a top man at this sort of thing which is why I leave it up to you mate. Let's get this back on the bike. Just going to put the cover back on. Um, just for your information, the manufacturer requests that you put some sealant under these half, half D shaped moon or half, half moon shaped D sections on either end. So we put a bit of sealant under those. The rest of it doesn't ask you to do that, so we've not bothered. This is a bit of a fiddly ass job, unfortunately. Uh, trying to get the gasket aligned with the cover and engine at the same time um, can be a bit of a fiddle, unfortunately. Uh, let's see how much we can this one puts up. So there you go, that's the running problem sorted, engine back together and running beautifully. The next job we're going to tackle is going to be the chassis work and it's the forks that were the biggest you hear, they were leaking, sticking, but the rear linkage needed stripping and greasing as well and the various bits we did on the chassis to make that right. Um, then we'll be looking at putting the bike together, taking it for a ride. If you like these videos, hit the like and subscribe button, we'll see you soon.